Welcome to another episode of the Christian Combatives Podcast. Today we are joined by Stigma. We are being hosted on Christcore, the Christian Discord server. If you would like to join us, discord.gg forward slash Christian, discord.gg forward slash Christian. And today we're going to be answering the question, is anime Jesus a sin? And wherever else the conversation goes, that's where it that's where it ends up. So first things first. Is anime Jesus a sin? I was just going to ask the question at first, is anime a sin? I think um, I had a video a while back and I said, I may, I, I may have said in the video at one point, I may have said, yeah, well, everybody knows that anime is a sin. And <laughs> it was kind the of a real throw- questions of our generation. Yeah. Well, that was, it. that was it. And this was kind of a throwaway comment. Oh yeah. Well, everybody knows anime is a sin. And I just kind of, I just kind of rolled with it. And, uh, and I got quite Don't elaborate and leave. <laughs> Well, that was the thing is I got quite a lot. I mean, it was a throwaway comment and I got quite a lot of flack for it. And people said, well, how could you say that anime is a sin? And, you know, uh, well, there, there's good anime and, and bad anime. You stirred the weebs from their slumber. Well, yeah, th- this is a, this is exactly this is exactly it. Now, a, this actually this conversation was uh, it was kind of happening in jest earlier in in the chat. We were talking about we were talking about anime and somebody was saying, yeah, oh, there's good anime, bad anime, whatever. And I said, the only good anime is King of the Hill. <laughs> that was informed. Oh. It does not count as an anime because it wasn't made in the right country. And I wanted to get into the discussion of what counts as an anime. If it's a Japanese IP and it's made in another oh, yeah. country, is it still an anime? So let's say Dragon Ball Z, for example. Everybody would say that that's an anime. Uh, but what if the animation is done? I know that they do a bunch of like CG stuff. What if the animation is done in... In Singapore, Korea, or the United States, or something like that, is it still an anime because it's a Japanese IP? Well, what about the Super Mario movie? That was a Japanese IP. Nintendo owns that, so. But- yeah, I I myself have like gone down this rabbit hole of <laughs> getting into the weeds of get into the what weeds. Is the anime? weeds. What is it? As an anime connoisseur myself. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I too have seen uh, every episode of animation. King of the Hill. Yeah. yeah, yeah, Veggie Tales, my favorite anime. <laughs> yeah, but no. um, yeah, it's it's anime as far as I know, as far as I've researched, um, is simply just a Japanese phrase for the general median of animation. Like it doesn't, I don't, it doesn't specifically just refer to Japanese animation because from what I've heard from other people who actually do live in Japan, they'll refer to things like family guy as an anime you know <laughs> like they, they just call that like a western or american anime which is pretty funny i mean so so i guess you would say the word is just interchangeable with with cartoon as much as people are pulling their hair out that's just what it sounds like to me i mean anime i assume is just sort of short for animation but i, I yeah. well Correct. okay so so we're working towards a question of what about what about an anime jesus and I suppose to get to that question first, you kind of have to ask the question um, about anime itself. Now, I, I would refer to the the style. For the sake of this conversation, I would say that there's, I don't know, I, I would, not one singular style, but there's you can you can look at it and say, okay, that's you know that's an anime style. And, and of course, if you're my father, everything's an anime style. It's, yeah. So what are you watching, you know, Pokemon's they... again? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, no, yeah. No, there, no, there's definitely a certain style too. Most yeah, yeah. anime, like you can just look at it and say, okay, that was definitely animated. There, yeah, Japan. there's features like the, the kind of the kind of stand out. You see the you know big. Well, I mean, again, there's a couple of different styles, but you see, you know, the 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 big eyes, the crazy hair, the 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 style of the way the action is 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 animated, um, which is interesting. Uh, so so you know, one of these recent masterpieces, um, Puss in Boots two or three or whatever it is, the. The one where, where it's death is the wolf and all this other stuff. The last wish, I think. Um, there's a lot of there's you know fight scenes and stuff in there that that people have analyzed and say, well, even though this is a CG scene, uh, it's done in an anime style. So there's kind of a an anime style of of movement and action and and, and things like that. So beyond just the visual sort of screenshot where you take a, a still image and you say, well, that's anime because it's got purple hair and and big eyes. Um, there's there's also a style of, of of movement and a style of storytelling or 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 action that you can look at it and say okay well this is kind of an an anime an anime style whether or not it's even made in you know Japan or wherever the the approved countries for oh, yeah. yeah so oh, yeah there have been several like shows that have 
tried to emulate that exact style. Like an obvious example would be something like Avatar: The Last Airbender, right, which right. was actually animated in Korea. If I'm uh, getting my research correct, which you know, depending on who you ask, some people will just say, "Oh, if it's got the style, then you could just call it an anime, or you can just call it Western animation, whatever you want to call it." But to get, I guess, to the root of the question, like, is anime, <laughs> is anime itself like? A sin or is it you know something that is that should be very carefully looked at when consuming and me personally i've seen several you know anime i've seen several series that have come out over the years attack on titan one of my favorite animes very uh very common you know answer for a lot of people but i would say if in the same way that like a person can draw whatever they want in a certain style right whether it's more cartoonish like disney or more realistic like the renaissance whatever it is it's it's a medium it's it doesn't have like a good or bad to it it's simply just how you draw something so do you, do you think while there are yeah, so, sorry to interrupt but do you, so do you think that there are certain styles and and i think about this not just for visual medium, but also for music. Do you think there are certain styles that kind of lend to a more, to a more, well, let's just say it, to a more degenerate, um, I don't know, content base uh, than others, or more styles that lend to a more, well, okay, so let, 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 let's compare, let's compare visual and, and auditory, auditory styles. If you have something, for example, you have, you have a hip hop genre. Where it's it's full of you know all these songs that that glorify sin and and things like that. You could say, well, hip hop in and of itself is not it's not necessarily sinful. Rap in and of itself is not necessarily sinful. And you can come up with examples. You know, Flame is a great example of somebody who takes who takes the medium and uses it for something virtuous. Is 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 there some something about the style itself that tends to lend? towards sin or is it just that you know coincidence that you know a bunch of people who a bunch of people who like to rap or to like or like to produce hip-hop music uh, just happen to produce some of the most uh, some of the most glorifying sin uh, content it's just a coincidence uh, I, i'm not sure if you understand what i'm asking oh no no i get what you're saying and there's definitely some validity to that sort of to that sort of thinking that sort of logic is i mean if you watch if you if you're just an outsider and someone just says okay this is anime you know watch a random series that's popular today say uh i don't know something like my hero academia that that show particularly has some questionable content it a staple in anime you might say is you know drawing very attractive looking females with uh oftentimes exaggerated exaggerated uh features so to speak so i think that lends itself to just the type of culture that it's being made in i mean a lot of people might know that japan is a very it's a very dark culture you know despite all the traditionalism and despite all the you know colors that they might display and all the anime that they might put out and be like oh yeah we're just a fun you know cheerful society it's 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 a very depressed very porn addicted society and mm -hmm. that's can certainly influence their style and how they decide to you know either draw these characters or portray people but so it <sighs> wouldn't be it wouldn't be the you would say it wouldn't be the medium itself but rather the culture where the medium where the medium is 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 present and regularly consumed it just so happens that in a culture that that tends to glorify sin publicly, they also, you know, use this medium, use this medium regularly. So of course the, uh, the sin of the culture seeps into the medium. And if they had a different style that they were using, it would seep into that style as well. Is that, is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, I kind of, and you know, I'm going to be honest, like, I feel like a large amount of people just sim for anime because they draw really attractive people doing funny things, you know, with, with, pretty mediocre storylines you know there's a lot of like slice of life anime that is extremely exaggerated and so i think there's definitely 
a sort of influence when it comes to, you know, what they want to portray and what they want to draw in terms of the style. But I, I don't want to get too nitty gritty and just be like, oh, because they have this influence on their style, then that means that like all of it is bad. Because at, at least from what I hear, a lot of the older stuff, you know, back in the 90s, um, a lot of it like Evangelion, some of those other older anime, like they were much more focused on just pure story, pure characters, like any other good work of animation or storytelling. And there's also just a lot of like, quite frankly, like just degenerate stuff that they also tend to release between the big series that gets popular. And it's something that definitely has a danger of luring people in and being like, oh, look at this stuff. It's really, you know, really cool on the outside. Look at these cool action scenes. Look at these really, you know, fun little adventures, these cute little animals. And then it's like, oh, wait, there's porn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I so think it's th that's th that's not just something that I would say that as you're describing this. This is something that I would say exists also in in any sort of um in any sort of vi visual medium. If you've got so in the past I suppose drawing cell by cell animation that would that would be really difficult to do and and um now it's it's so much easier to to produce not just animated animated content but also kind of live action content anybody can afford a camera a, a phone that can that can shoot in a, you know, a a decent quality but what, what i'm seeing is the same sort of thing if you go on if you go on hbo for example if you go on any of these any of these kind of cable hey we we can do r-rated stuff uh tv shows beyond just anime if, you, if you're watching an hbo show there's there's almost certainly going to be a guarantee of of nudity of whether or not it contributes to the story story or not i mean sometimes it seems almost like like a necess they feel like it's a necessary fan service that they have to put in it it really feels like a parallel to me where you have look here's this show that's got you know it's about i don't know vikings or about warriors or wizards or 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 gangsters or anything like that and then they have to put in pornographic elements just to say hey look we're hbo and, and look what we can do um this is what you came to the to the channel for and and yeah there could be great stories and stuff but they, they i feel there's they almost feel like there's an obligation to insert these things to keep it, people. It definitely interested. feels obligatory. Like right. you'll you'll just be watching it and you're like, okay, these are great characters. This is a great this is a great storyline that they're building up. There's lots of good tension. There's lots of good dynamics between the relationships. And then all of a sudden something just happens and you're like, Why is this why is this girl all of a sudden just like tearing off her clothes and just trying to woo these men? It's like it makes no sense other than to just have it in there as fan service, which is becoming a lot more prevalent in anime the more i've watched at least the more modern ones it's it's definitely obligatory in a way so i'm it, it's a, it's I, a trope. I tend to be very careful it, it, it's a it's absolutely a, oh it's a, a trope, big trope yeah. in the anime community like the whole thing about the uh discussing weeb who only watches the show for the whether like the waifus whatever they're called it's 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 definitely a staple in the culture and which is why i think anime you know, for, for true and not gets a right. bad rap. All right. So what I, what I was, what I was thinking is I could always shoot myself in the foot here. Let me, let me turn the mirror around. So we've got, we've got these, say we've got these genres of music and these genres of, of visual entertainment. If you've got an HBO show, if you've got an anime, you can expect, oh, well, you know, there's going to be some lascivious thing going on in here. It's, it's kind of expected, but turn that around. If you've got an example of, I'll use our, audio art for first if you got an example of what is the genre that you would expect okay this is wholesome this is what christians listen to that kind of thing if if non-christians listen to rap and death metal then christians would listen to obviously country music right but when was the last time you actually listened to the lyrics on some of the modern the modern country songs they're they're no less degenerate they're no less glorifying of sin than than anything you'd find in you know most most pop music on any other radio station it, it's we we've got this perception in our head i think it's easy to, to kind of get this holier than now idea of well 
I don't listen to the devil's music. I don't listen to the devil's music. Devil makes rap and the devil makes dubstep and the devil makes them Satan lyrics. I listen to good old wholesome country music. And it's like this cowboy dude singing about getting drunk and driving drunk down the road and, and hooking up with some some lady in jean shorts. And, 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 and it's, the same, it's the same concept of kind of bragging about sin, but for some reason... It con- just with a bit more eloquence. It, it, there's more eloquence. I would, I would extend this also to the visual medium, uh, and and people are going to fight me. People have fought me before on on Karnak. Karnak is a is a famous Lutheran Lutheran painter, and he would paint you know depictions of of things like Adam and Eve. He would paint depictions of things that had that had nudity in them. You've got plenty of examples in the Renaissance era and around there before and after where you have graphic depictions you well for the time i suppose of of nudity and and when people are looking at this they say look at these beautiful pictures you know all over the sistine chapel look at this caravaggio look at this you know all these other things they say look at these uh, venus venus de milo anything like that and for some reason because of the style because of the art style whether it's country music or whether it's this fine uh, fine dutch master painting this the style kind of makes people say, well, it's okay to, to have all these visual depictions of nudity here, you know, and, and the sake of the nudity, the, the, the purpose of it. I mean, it's not like, oh, look, here's, uh, here, here's Christ on the cross being crucified in all of its gruesome detail. There are, there are depictions of Christ in the nude on the cross. That's one thing where you're saying, look at this, this poor, uh, this poor man and, you know, being shamed and that's part of it. But it's another thing entirely where, where you're painting a whole bunch of, you know, bare chested French, French women conquer, or what is the, the, the French revolution lady? Is that justice or whoever that is? I don't know. Yeah, but, you know, she's uh, always, like, she's always uh, falling out of her shirt and stuff like that. And for some reason we look at the this, revolution. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look up these, look up these paintings of, of the French revolution and its depiction as, you know, lady France or whatever. And, She's always fallen out of her shirt, and for some reason, that gets a pass. But if the style changes, it's like, well, that's you know, that's degenerate. That's degenerate art, whether it's wholesome or not. You know, an anime style is is evil, whether you know, regardless of regardless of the content. I think we're really, I don't know. I, I, on one hand, I cannot get over my prejudice against certain styles where I listen to a style, and I think, well, this is this. It's easier. I guess it's easier to sin in this <laughs> in this style. Yeah, there's more expectation of sin in one style or another. But realistically, I mean, this is what the the, the these paintings, these Renaissance paintings of of nude women. This was the playboy of the time. This is not just oh well. They just happen to have you know they have a higher view of of art and no the 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 women who who would act as uh, act as nude models would be treated as prostitutes it was seen as prostitution you were selling your body for money for people to look at now all of a sudden it's 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 high art when it's painted painted instead of you know paying somebody in, in person it just doesn't make any sense i think it's i think it's making an excuse for sin it was at this point in the conversation when we were joined, or possibly invaded by, one of the resident Roman Catholics from the server, Sola Ecclesia. So, let's get back to the episode. I think it's worth noting on the French thing that th- that is pretty much an accurate, it's a pr- pretty fitting uh, representation of the French Revolution, just... Uh, if you look at that painting, like yeah, yeah, that that makes sense. Well, yeah, the the people look at the French Revolution, and it's not necessarily just some noble like let's let's you know vive la la Christianity or anything like that. The, the French Revolution wasn't about about Christian morals or anything. There was there was absolutely a hedonistic element in the in the culture. There was around that time that was oh you're throwing off the shackles of the shackles of morality. But I don't know. I, I, you get my frustration, though, right? You you've seen these you've seen these beautiful paintings, these wonderful, well done paintings, but because they're done by you know a Dutch master or something, then suddenly they're they're above above critique. You can say, well, you know, this guy painted the crucifixion, and he's also painting this you know painting with all these you know the nymphs in the woods or something like that, and they get a pass because. Mm-hmm. You, know, you can hang that on yeah. the wall in a church or something. There's I would there's definitely something to be said about uh, painting something that could be potentially 
potentially what's the word I'm looking for? It could potentially attract someone to sin, mm-hmm. right? Especially when it comes to sexuality, like sexuality, especially for men is extremely visual. There's a visual element to it. Unlike something like, let's say violence, which is why I think there's a big difference between depicting violence and depicting sexuality or nudity because we perceive those very differently. Um, like I myself have done uh, live art where we've had a nude model come in and we've had to draw said nude model and, you know, work out anatomy and try to make it as realistic as possible. So there's, so I definitely understand that type of mindset for me personally, it's, it definitely is a mindset issue. And I think it's, not subjective, but it is, it is, I would say case by case, because one person, like you said, could look at it and just say, Hey, all I see here is good anatomy work, attention to detail, great brush strokes, great, uh, lighting, great shadows, great work on the textures. And another person can look at that and say, ha boobies. It's, it's definitely something to say when you're a christian who is going to consume this and who is going to uh who is going to be potentially affected by this like i myself i still have plenty of you know anatomy practices that that look rather nude i don't show them to anyone because i don't want anybody to stumble i don't want to cause any of my brothers to stumble but for me it is purely a it is purely a practice of art it is not something that i find to be you know, leading me to sin personally when I do it myself or I study anatomy. So there's definitely an element of case by case, person by person, which is why I would say when you're making it public, um, it gets a lot more muddy at that point, like you said, and sort of to bring it back to the anime discussion. (laughs) um, All this is to say that one person is not going to be like the other one person may can watch like a thousand shows of anime and never stumble once you know no matter what they put into it and so another person can be like no i can't even look at it that that style triggers me you know to want to look at the uh other stuff that is not very wholesome so i think when it comes to the question is anime like itself a sin i would say no There is a certain element to it that may lead someone in order to sin. Um, But for me, it's no different than I would say a Disney style or a Western style or even a exaggerated style of, you know, abstract or surrealist artists. It's just who is consuming it? What is their what is their tolerance for, you know, seeing things that might be triggering and it's, it's up to discernment. It's up to you to have discernment on whether or not you can handle that kind of thing. And like, like I said, there's, there's definitely plenty of good anime out there with little to no fan service whatsoever. And it's the same as if you were just watching a live action action thriller. So I definitely think it's a case by case basis, but I can't say with a good conscience that anime itself is a sin. What about you solo? It looks like you got something you want to say on the matter. Yeah, I I think I agree with that. Um, But so on that subject though, the different, different styles of art and how we look at one and think that it's high art and the other, and we think it's, it's pornography. um, I think that there's, I think that Christ, you know, we say that he he tra- he is lifted above the heavens. That is, he he fills all things because he transcends the very concept of of location by transcending the heavens. And so, on the one hand, he's the highest; he's at the top of the hierarchy. He's the king of the universe. He he dwells in unapproachable light. But on the other hand, he descended into hell. He became he was abandoned by God. He was the lowest of the low. Um, and there's something about like Christ unites all things, you know, he, he is the one for those who understand the reference. He's the one who can yoke ox and ass together and it works because he, he, he's the master of all. That's why Gentiles are grafted into Israel. So the, um, 
Christ is the one who can account for everything, who can incorporate everything into himself, and everything has a place. So um, we tend to think sometimes, I think, that, that you either have a standard of, of snobbishness and rules, or you have just and anything goes, there are no standards. But if you view it as a, the hierarchy, where Christ fills the whole hierarchy, so you have good high art that is suitable for use in churches, and then you have things in between, and at the bottom you have, well, it, if you say below the hierarchy, there would be things that no one should be doing, but at the bottom of the hierarchy, there would just be like basic popular art, the kind of stuff that you put in, in comic books or whatever, in, in like, like really childish ones. And those, the thing is that you can have that, you can have decent, um, you can have decent anime or decent fan fan cartoons or comic books or whatever, and they can be acceptable. But you don't want that to, you don't want to pretend that it's the same as something higher up on the hierarchy, like a, a like an icon or a crucifix or something. Like those two styles are different; they're designed for different things. But it doesn't mean that the lower thing is bad. But at the same time, because it's about things relating to Christ, that Christ can fill all things, but that means that everything in the hierarchy can also be bad. Like Satan, it is said, was the highest of the angels, it is the, the usual interpretation, and yet he became the worst of all creatures. Um, so you can have high art that is not properly ordered. That is, um, there were times that these Renaissance masters uh, would like something was intended to be like uh, erotic in a in a way that was probably not appropriate. That they went too far and they they didn't keep things properly ordered to the to to glorifying God. And you can certainly have that in the lower things. That's why you have have clubs where it's this this music that you might think, well, there's nothing wrong with this music in itself. But if you take everything together in context, everyone is is getting drunk. Things are happening that shouldn't be happening. There's something wrong with this something was not ordered properly to, to create this this den of debauchery even if the individual pieces they don't seem to be to be bad so like anything can go wrong but anything can also be used for good you can create the lowest whatever the lowest medium of art is you can do something with it to glorify god but you can also do something with the highest thing in the hierarchy to to promote sin. And the higher it is in the hierarchy, the more subtle it is, the, the harder it is sometimes to see why, why it's wrong, which is why the devil disguises himself as an angel of light. Right. And just an, as, just as an example, you can look at a uh, old religious art of depictions of hell, like what hell would look like. Uh, for example, you have like Das Jungs Gerst, who did a extremely graphic, uh, painting of what you know souls who are damned to hell would look like and what they would be enduring and it's it's extremely disturbing one would say like why would anybody want to uh depict this why would anyone you know want to create something that's this foul looking or this or this you know this uh heart-wrenching and i think it does, does stuff like that serves a purpose whether it's to to pick something that is frightening, whether it's to pick something that is, you know, I guess I should say hellishly real, um, potentially, it's it serves a purpose, even though it is in a way grotesque. Um, I think there's definitely a time and place for things such as that. And that doesn't mean that the whole medium has to be uh, gone away with because oh somebody at this time created something that led the said person X Y Z to sin. Um, it's definitely something that has to be dealt with with uh, a high level of discernment, uh, a spirit of humility, and a spirit of I should say, um. Yeah, pretty much just discernment. You sh you need to be aware of what other people are going to think of what this is going to have an effect on. And um, you should definitely be clear about your motive for drawing or animating or creating said piece of art. 
Yeah, there's and, a there's a balance there. There's a the two aspects of it. It's, it's not just. I mean, you have to keep both in mind. Why why am I doing what I'm doing? What is my purpose for creating this? But also, how will other people potentially perceive this? Am I causing Am I causing a brother potentially to stumble by doing this? Now, the the problem is um, once you get to a certain degree, so back in the, I don't know if it was Renaissance, whenever it was, there was uh, depictions depictions of the of, of the unclothed human body were completely forbidden at a, at a certain point. I forget when this was medieval or whenever. The problem was when you were when you were creating textbooks, essentially, to teach people how to practice medicine, it couldn't be... It couldn't be depicted. You couldn't depict somebody and say, look, this, if you have to do an operation on, on, a, on a woman who's, who's pregnant, you have to do a cesarean section or something, this is where the uterus is. This is where, you know, if the person, you know, they, they've got this pain here and these are where the internal organs are, you'd have these bizarre sort of depictions of how, how do you de- depict the, the human body in a medical sense if, if you have to depict them fully, fully clothed. So there's there's a way that you can kind of you can kind of swing too far in, in the way to say I don't want anybody to potentially sin by reading this copy of Grey's Anatomy, so I'm going to uh, I'm going to you know put everybody in a put everybody in a burka and you just have to guess where the kidneys are <laughs> in the human body without any right yeah uh, of course obviously you know the extreme in the other in the other way is kind of just it's it's almost it's almost oversharing. I think I think there's a couple of elements here. There's obviously, you know, the the, the direct sin element, the pornographic element, the 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 way to display something uh, for the sake of trying to cause other people to sin. There's also there's also almost a, a a privacy element, a should this be kept private type thing. For example, uh, if somebody if somebody is a patient in in a hospital, they're given a gown, not you know the, the the doctor may have to have access to access to their body to to help them with healing but they're given a gown for the for the sake of privacy and it's not they're not put on display for everybody else they're they're given they're given a room with with a curtain some some degree of of privacy not because well you know everybody's going to automatically sexualize a, a medical uh, a medical example but just for the sake of sometimes you know you you cover up for for dignity or for no if for no other reason. So I want to actually so I'm going to dive into a little bit more of this because I think Sola talked about an additional concept, kind of the depiction of the high things with the, with the low forms. At least that's kind of what I what I got from some of it. So if we're talking about, for example, an anime depiction of Jesus, you guys were arguing about Chibi Jesus, which I had to look up. It's like big head. I guess like ultra anime Jesus, where big it's like, head, little body, yeah, big head, little cheesy. body, that that kind of thing, and uh, and this is and this is the same conversation that I get on uh, with with other servers where people are saying, well, what about like furry Jesus or 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 something like this, like <laughs> where you've got you've got okay, well, you could be the best anime artist in the world. Should you be using that style of art to depict you know the the high holy things and follow-up question should you be using that style of art video image or or audio for example in in a worship setting in in a in a parish should you have chibi anime jesus drawn by i don't know whoever the most famous popular anime artist of all time is if you have that should that be in a church what about well i think so, like the, the sorry go ahead i think the answer to the second question uh, for those of us from a more high church tradition, would have to be absolutely not. You do not bring those forms of art into a worship setting. It's it's because uh, whether you, whether you think that the icons are something to be venerated or just a teaching tool, it's so, it's something that is informing people. This is what God is like. This is what God has done. This is how God has revealed Himself. And um, if you're saying, well, God has revealed Himself as uh, this cute little guy with a tiny little head and this tiny little body and he looks like a baby that that's there's something wrong about that and that's the point of the meme that i made i saw that image and i thought well here's a bunch of violent bible verses let's see how well that goes with it because if you look at traditional art it's something that you can pair with any bible verse so you're not a fan and, of lego the lego bible or whatever it's called the brick the brick testament well, i'll get I'll, I'll get to that because that's <laughs> a slightly different question but 
You the, just don't think we should be um, using that in church. Uh, you're reading from right. the... Yeah. You aren't, obviously not. Because you look at traditional depictions of Jesus, whether it be the the, the medieval ones that continued from the Roman style or the, uh, the Renaissance ones, which have become informed our modern uh, depictions of Jesus. There's something about them that they can be paired with the violent verses of the Bible, and it might it might still be shocking because that's how those verses are. But you might understand. Yes, I I understand. This is the this man in this painting is the God who destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, the God who slew the firstborn of Egypt. I don't think you can look at Chibi Jesus and get the same feeling, but it's because Jesus has to include all of it, right? The scriptures are the image of Christ. That's they tell us what God is like. And if we're depicting our own version of God and it doesn't fit with what we read in the scriptures, I mean, that's exactly what the first commandment tells us not to do. Do not make, do not set up gods for yourselves. Do not make an image for yourself. We're making an image of God that doesn't fit with the image he's given us. Like it's, it's not something that, that is, it is not a way God has revealed himself. It's a way that we want him to be. And that doesn't, especially in a liturgical setting that is highly inappropriate. Well, let, let, of a yeah, that's what I wanted to push to. What about, so, I, I, I mean, I would absolutely agree, especially in the liturgical setting, is you want to be very, very regulated on the type of art that you're using. And again, this is one of the reasons why I, I push for certain types of music, is I, I think that certain types of music do tend to lend an air to kind of, to, to higher to higher forms of, of, of musicality. There is, you know, if... Yeah, you could say, well, this is, you know, a really great rap and, and it's got great, I don't know, great lyrics and stuff like that. But there's just, I suppose, culturally, we we have set up certain types of music that are that are more appropriate liturgically. We won't have necessarily a Renaissance fair type uh, <laughs> type musical thing as they might have in the past. But I mean, there's a reason that that Bach has kind of stood the test of time. But in terms of visual art, OK. We could, I, I think we probably, the three of us, we can agree that there is, in the liturgical setting, that we need to be especially careful. We need to be especially careful of of the types, the, even the forms of, of, of depictions. Uh, was, you know, chibi Jesus and furry Jesus. No, no. Uh, to even, bring up the greatest anime of all time, King of Veggie the Tales. Oh, yeah. What? No. Veggie Tales. <laughs> the creator the voice of Bob Tomato and several other characters on it, Phil Fisher. Um, I believe it was his grandmother who he talked to when he was talking about creating the show and what it would be, what the premise was, what the concept was. And as far as I know, uh, his grandmother gave him only two requests. And I can't remember what the first one was, but the second one was basically, do not depict Jesus as a vegetable. Um, <laughs> Which I am eternally so, grateful for. I've I made yeah. countless jokes of how awful that would have been. Actually, it isn't the one episode uh, the Saint Nicholas episode? No, no, the little drummer boy. Uh, maybe they don't show him, but he's in that episode. Oh, is he like depicted as a baby? I don't remember. I can't remember how they depict him, but he's in, like the little drummer boy is Junior the Asparagus, and he goes into the stable and plays a song. But I don't remember what Jesus, if Jesus is even shown, or what he looked like. Yeah, because I, I never saw that. That was, that was a later episode, after Phil Vischer had, was less involved in the production. Uh, I see. But um, yeah, so that sort of mindset is that there does need to be a certain reverence to Christ when it comes to depicting him. I would say, especially particularly, like you said, in a liturgical setting, in a church service, in a worship gathering. Um. I myself follow plenty of Christian artists on Instagram. Instagram, Instagram. Uh, I follow some of them. Some of these weird, yeah, like, evangelical like test your gifts type thing. Yeah. I'm, what's your Instagram sign? Oh, Pisces. <laughs> I didn't even know that was a word. Instagram. It is but, now. Um, I'm, I'm gonna make a book. I'm gonna make millions. Oh boy! Off of a bunch of white women with their stomachs. <laughs> you gotta find your spiritual Instagram gift. But um, yeah, so I follow a bunch of Christian artists on Instagram and they have, you know, a bunch of really good, you know, pieces of Jesus in various situations. There are ones where he's, you know, more reverent. He's more clearly drawn with realistic proportions, realistic looking, uh, realistic looking style. 
and there are others where he's more of the uh he's more of the anime style you know he's got a sort of fun element to him he's got a very relatable sort of cartoonish style that he's depicted with and they'll put him in a bunch of funny situations like oh jesus has found you uh slacking on your bible study again and you're now scrolling through tiktok he's gonna burst through the window and be like hey put down tiktok and pick up the bible so there is 100 percent, i believe a time and a place for the many depictions of jesus as long as they are in line with the Bible and the depictions in the scriptures of how he is and who he represents and what he represents and what his teachings are. Um, so if someone was basically saying, oh, hippie Jesus, he's fine with, you know, the pot smokers, he's going to be smoking pot along with Joe Rogan on his podcast, then it's like, yeah, that is definitely something that you got to look at and be like, no, that's that's not something that's going to fly. Is is talent uh, is talent a factor? So in in terms of let's say you have you have somebody who wants to reverently draw. I think about that that restoration that that one lady did on the the Jesus restoration where he looks like a potato. Um, where they, there was a, some ancient painting inside of a church somewhere, and she restored it, quote unquote, and it just looked like a smudge with a smiley face on it. To is there a talent aspect or should my my child who wants to draw Christ crucified on the cross should i be hanging up his his crayon drawings all over the church because they're intended they're intended to reverently depict Jesus i think style can have a effect on it because if we want the church to well represent not just not just style I, but i mean i mean talent level too Oh, talent level. Yeah, well, yeah. So if if you were to like, if You're you were to look at the children's for drawing, God's house. <laughs> get your drawings out of here. He's not a stick figure. Yeah, there's no stick figure, Jesus. Um, there's definitely a level of skill and talent that does go into it, especially when you want to, let's say, hang it up in a church setting that like that, like you said, is supposed to be very ordered, very uh reverent very beautiful in a way there's supposed to be an element of beauty to it and so while a children's drawing of course for no fault of their own may be like cute it may be adorable it's not gonna i wouldn't say it is able to depict that sense of beauty in a way that someone who is skilled who's able to fully get across what they're trying to do uh, is able to put forth on a piece of paper or on a fabric or a tapestry. Yeah, but then we, I don't I mean, some pretty cartoonish glass, uh, <laughs> colored glass. So I don't know. It, yeah, I have seen some. Yeah. What, what were you saying, Sola? Yeah, if you if you look at the descriptions of the, the building of the tabernacle and the temple, there was no concept of well, the, the heart was in the right place, so it's okay. It was <laughs> God selected to his craftsmen, he gave them the Holy Ghost to give them the ability to be good at the, the various arts they needed. They sla they painted the temple with gold twice because there were two temples and both times it was painted with gold. Um, like this was God demanded that they spend a, a lot of wealth on the tabernacle and the temple and that they do it according to a particular rule and any, and they were so intent on getting the best materials and the best craftsmen that they hired uh, Lebanese men from Tyre to bring down the trees of Lebanon and the workmen of Lebanon so that the temple could be perfect. They were like this notion that we have now that, well, the heart was in the right place, so it doesn't matter. It, it goes too far. It, it's it, because there is a, obviously God accepts our intent when you are putting he wants us to give the best. Like you, Cain could have argued, well, you know, I gave, I gave what I was given, but he didn't give the very best. He didn't, he didn't, any love that he claimed he had for God was, he didn't, it did not manifest itself in his works. He did not actually give God the best that he had, but Abel did. Now, of course, you can have someone who gives the best that he has, but he does it for selfish reasons like Cain and, and vice versa. But, the point is that where 
a good tree does not produce bad fruit or, or vice versa. If you really love God as the highest good, you will want to give him the absolute best that you have. And so the individual will do the best job that he has. The community will use the best individuals they have and so on. So, yeah, and you should not be putting up a ch child's drawing in church unless he is some kind of prodigy. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there, that, that does seem, I mean, there is, there is a, kind of sub, sub, a kind of subjective element and an objective element in this. The objective element is, what is the best you can depict? Let's say, for example, you're a prisoner of war, you're in a camp, and you're allotted a, 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 a hut, a shack, or whatever, with, you know, that you can make a chapel. Uh, and, I, and I'm a chaplain, and the best we can do is we can repurpose some lumber to make wood. And we have like a driftwood that we try to carve into a depiction of you. And it's not, you know, it's not worthy of being in any sort of museum or anything like that. But the best that we can do is we make the, make the house of the Lord into something distinct, something, something different from the culture, something where you intentionally give the best and do the best. I mean, if you look even at the tabernacle, the tabernacle was a, it was a tent, but it was an amazing tent. It wasn't just, well, you know, God is everywhere, so just worship him however, <laughs> however you want, however you feel called to worship, you know, whatever kind of song you want, whatever kind of decoration you want. If, yeah, the, the descriptions of, of the building of the temple and and this is made out of this material and shall be this many cubits long and, and, and shall be perpendicular to this and, and this shall happen and you have to paint it and th these people have to be involved. It's, it's, it's almost like God is a craftsman and he's very intentional about not just the things that he makes, but his space where he chooses to serve his people and where he wants his people to gather and to praise him and worship him together. The idea is we want to make it as, as glorified as, as possible, whatever. I mean, the subjective element is, you know, what are you capable of doing? I'm not capable of plating my church in gold as much as I would love to. <laughs> I'm just not, I don't have that much gold sitting around. I can't cover the outside and the inside of the church with gold. And, and you know, I would love to have tons of stained glass and, and icons and all these other great things. But we do the best with, with, with what we have. The church should be, it should be clean. If you, if you, if you have an attempt, you know, you should, if it's a, if it's a shack, if it's four sticks, a roof and a dirt floor, Sweep the dirt up, you know, uh, chase the chickens away, that, that sort of thing. Even in missionaries, there, there's some degree of we should try to make a reverent space to worship the Lord and to receive his gifts. But, yeah, so my kids are not that good at drawing. I'm sorry if you ever listen to this podcast, my children, I love you, but at this point in your life, you are not good at drawing. <laughs> <laughs> not in the objective sense. I love your drawings. I'll stick them on a fridge, but I'm not going to put them behind the altar. Uh, and I think the same, we should have the same idea also for church. This is, this is another argument also for, for, for style of music. You should be, as a pastor in the congregation, attempting the best music you have available. This is why as Lutheran's Walt wrote about, you know, we shouldn't be using the Methodist children's hymn book to, to come up with songs. We have better songs. We don't wanna we don't wanna bring this this less lesser stuff into our church where we can give the best we have to to our children, to the members of the congregation. But that's uh, yeah, so that's my, my perspective is kind of it's subjective and it's subjective. Objective beauty exists, uh, but subjectively you you can't manage, you cannot manage the Temple of Solomon. So what's the best you can do? Yeah, and I agree. And I think it's it's a matter of you have to acknowledge reality, and that's something we don't like to do. We want to we want to play the what if game. But we're not supposed to play what if. We're supposed to acknowledge what reality is. So when the Lord re rebukes Martha for rebuking Mary, he doesn't say, Martha, you have chosen wrong. He says, Mary has chosen the better thing. Martha serves, Mary sits at his feet and listens, and both both are fine, and one should not judge the other. You know, it's, it's, Paul says that, who am I to judge the servant of another? God will make him stand. So we, we think, well, you know, in this culture, they, uh, they walk around mostly naked, you know, in some island nation. And there are two responses that humans tend to have towards that one is oh okay well it's modest for them so that means that our standards are arbitrary and we should get to dress however we want and the other response is how dare they they're barbarians they're they're horrible we need to go civilize them and force them to 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 wear victorian clothing 
And I think both of those are wrong. It's no, we will dress the way that our culture says we dress, and they will dress how their culture says to dress in line with Christian principles. And as long as it's in line with the principles of modesty and, and charity and decency, it, it will work itself out. But you shouldn't try to say that this culture does one thing, so you should do it. And it's the same here. A community that has access to the wealth, of, uh, in Israel's case, the wealth of Egypt or Persia, in our case, you know, uh, the, the wealth of, of medieval Europe or, or the wealth of a giant megachurch, they can afford paint their church in gold, to, to spend hundreds of years crafting the best possible church they can, hire the greatest artistic geniuses in history to put up things. Not all of us can do that, and we shouldn't, we shouldn't be frozen and, and ashamed because we can't. And in fact, if you look at poor churches where there are genuine saints who are doing their best with what little they have, and they're, you know, you, the little things they have, their little pieces of scrap and trash, we would, you know, those are some of the holiest things in the world because they were used with genuine love, and it was a sign of, of human optimism in the worst of conditions. But that doesn't mean that we, with access to all of our wealth, should try to do the same thing. It would be like, suppose Jesus were to come to us, and he were a poor man in a hoodie, you know, and because that's all he could afford, and so on, and he lived like this homeless man. That would not mean that we should be putting our priests in hoodies and homeless men. It would mean that Christ was identifying with the poor, but it was, that doesn't, in its context, that's a good thing. It's a holy thing. It's a beautiful thing. But when you're in a context where that is not a necessity, it just becomes, it, or it usually becomes just sort of lazy and gross and grotesque, and it doesn't have the same, because it's not genuine poverty. It's this, this just, well, poverty is beautiful, so just get rid of all of the beauty. Uh, and it also mistakes, and this is a mistake people make, like, yes, you can have inner beauty that is makes up for a lack of outer beauty, and you can have outer beauty that shields a lack of inner beauty. But that doesn't mean that you should get rid of the outer beauty altogether. Because if you, your inner beauty will express itself in as much outer beauty as it can, as it can reasonably hold on to. Mm. And to segue this back to anime, <laughs> um, you can get the beauty. Yeah, yeah. the highest. Uh, beauty, yeah. Japan as a culture is, I believe, anime now. In the same way that like K-pop apparently is Korea's biggest export, anime is definitely Japan one of Japan's biggest exports, especially for the West. It is a incredibly lucrative and highly profitable uh, institution to be an anime or manga artist. But so if you look at that and you see, okay, this appears to be a very popular, very uh, integral part of the culture. And Japan is very small in the Christian population. It is one of the most homogeneously, I think like atheists with some, uh, Shinto. Was it like Shinto? Yeah, yeah Shinto uh, influences. It's it's a pretty irreligious uh, society, and so say you're like a young, uh, you're a young Japanese guy who wants to make a difference in the culture. You're a recent Christian convert, and you're like, I have this passion for drawing. I have this passion for anime. I watched it since I was young. I grew up with it. I want to make a difference in the culture using this thing that I'm passionate about and use it for good. Because as we all know, whatever the enemy made for evil, God can use for good, especially when it comes to people. So I think in that case, you know, within the cultural context, even though we in the West have a certain idea of what anime is and what it's depicted as and the certain, uh, the certain graphic material that lies therein with a lot of the uh, content, um, if you're a guy who truly wants to make a, you know, difference in the culture, who wants to use this as a way to reach perhaps the younger generation, because anime is extremely popular with Zoomers and millennials at the moment. And so I think this would be a great way to use this and to turn it around in a sense to depict, like you said, the higher things using a, what we might perceive as a lower art form. Um, 
it's it's it has its place and i think it's definitely something that can be uh utilized for the kingdom of god if it's used correctly even in the uh cultural context of you know what we in the west tend to perceive it to be and i don't watch anime but i have a friend who does and he says <laughs> that the reason he does is because it's less degenerate than western media uh because western media it's just not good it's it's just garbage it's it's uh corporate fill in the blanks garbage that is it pushes progress it either pushes a progressive agenda or speaking within a context where the progressive agenda is taken for granted and it's just not good it's degenerate it degenerate either morally degenerate or just artistically bad whereas yeah. if you know where to look apparently you know and there is anime that is actually good it's it's an actual story and not just king of the hill uh yeah some and of the best storylines have been from anime in recent times that i've seen some of the best character development that i've seen some of the best artistic expressions of uh like whatever it is whether it's uh grief whether it's whether it's uh pain whether it's happiness it, anime just has a way to to express this in the way it's drawn very well it is in a way very exaggerated and in that way it is able to get across what it's trying to say and a lot of it is pretty good there is a lot of good stuff you can get from anime and even though like i said japanese culture is not particularly christian at all there are several there are several moral elements that you can definitely pull from a lot of these shows or a lot of these movies that I think would be a thousand times better for uh, a family to watch than, yeah, most of the mainstream uh, media that's coming out of Hollywood these days. There is, yeah. You know what? I, this isn't this isn't something that I've considered, but really, really thinking about the uh, kind of modern modern Western shows. Was, uh, I, I was listening to some podcast, or it was probably Ben Shapiro or something like that, and he was talking about some Transformers show on. Uh, on Paramount Plus or something like that, and you know Blue's Clues or um, any of these other Coco Malone or whatever these these Western kids, these Western uh, marketed for kids kind of content is is intentionally subversive in a way that okay you could say well okay a anime is often you know you've got you've got the the kind of erotic fan service type stuff um, it, it's obnoxious. And, but that's, that's really the, the kind of sin that they focus on. There's less subversion in terms of kind of teaching, uh, misleading children and teaching them, you know, things about themselves that, that aren't, aren't true. It's, you know, the more I think about it, anime, anime may be bad. <laughs> like, in, like I just, it, it, the, the culture, let's say, you know, if you're, if you're doing the, the broad spectrum of all of anime and you, and you grab a big handful of it and you're like, there's a bunch of bad stuff in here. But then, if you grab a handful of Blues Clues and you know, and their and their parade and their you know all this other stuff, it's like, man, you know what? We're not really doing much better in Western society, and and we've got a bunch of a bunch of additional sins that we're coming up with every day that we're kind of we're pushing in our own sort of content. It, it's it's more, I would say, it's even more subtle and more su subversive. The themes in 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 the examples that I've seen from anime, that it's not so much that the themes are are being taught are are evil. I mean, they've got a you know a tenuous grasp on morality from a secular society, but uh, you know they're they're depicting things that are you know that are that are private things that are are sexual when they shouldn't be. But they're not teaching themes about truth and and morality in the world, generally speaking, that are just completely you know the inverse of reality. We have mastered that as 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 a Western society. We have mastered the art of teaching the opposite of reality and trying to make it come across as, as, as reasonable. And that is not, I've never seen that depicted uh, in anime. Anime is always like, Oh, here's this just absurdism, just extreme amounts of like bizarreness, but it's never, Hey, I'm, you know, Barney, the purple, I don't know if Barney does this. Uh, forgive me if he, if he doesn't, but I'm Barney, the purple dinosaur, and I'm going to teach you some truth about the world. And, and then, you know, insert lie here. I'm Bill Nye, the science guy. Let me teach you some truth about reality and who you are. Insert lie here. It's that's, 
you know, that's our claim to sin as, as Western society is, is I think, um, where, where anime is, is often, is often pornographic. That's their claim to sin. Our claim to sin is, is we like to lie in the West. We can lie very easily and, and, and very subtly and subvert children from a very early age with a lot of the material that we generate. But I don't know, maybe I'm just being pessimistic. Oh, no, no, no. You're absolutely correct, Lee. Um, I watched a lot of cartoons growing up, and I still do. I still enjoy uh, animation a lot. Um, there is definitely, in recent years, a massive push uh, for political activism and moral uh, grandstanding and lecturing in these children's shows that have been coming out lately, especially animated ones. You have a lot of, uh, you have a lot of depictions of whether it be homosexual characters or, um, depicting ultra religious zealotry in the characters, uh, whether it's something that is marketed towards children about, you know, Hey, you can actually, uh, you can choose your own gender. There's no such thing as absolute truth. You can make it whatever you want it to be. There's no reason why you should be, you know, looking at yourself and trying to better yourself and trying to be more moral, more virtuous. It's all very, it's all very acidic in its effects on children. And it's been going on for quite a while now. I've only just been able to see it a lot more in the recent children's media and i'm not just talking about like oh ages like 13 to 17 or 18 nah you'll see the stuff in like like pre-k yeah. uh yeah. pre-k shows things like uh what's it called like uh sesame street stuff of that Muppet caliber. Babies. Man, oh yeah babies, yeah <laughs> so i guess the question at the end of the day for parents is this which would you rather have your children watching steven universe or dragon ball z <laughs> and why would it be Dragon Ball? Because I want them to go to the gym and get gains. Yeah, all they're going to learn from Dragon Ball Z is is how to be a good friend and beat people up, which is you know that's pretty good. But yeah, but the yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know. The all, all of society is going down the drain. We are at actually just past the the one hour mark here, so I'd like to wrap it up. I'm actually pretty happy that we didn't get to the other topics that I that I had planned because that means I can I can put them on the on the back burner for another episode. Um, this episode we covered is anime Jesus a sin, and with that, I'd like to actually ask you directly uh, the one word answer: Is anime Jesus a sin? Stigma, go first. Yes or no. Uh, no, as long as it's taken with reverence. Okay, that was the one word. All right, Sola. <laughs> Sola, is no, anime Jesus but, a sin? No, but that, not all things are helpful. Yeah, that's a all good All things answer. are helpful. Not all things are helpful. That's a good answer. Uh, I, I'll, I'll abstain from answering because I've already answered uh, this entire episode. Thank you all for joining us uh, today. God bless you all. Take care. Thank you for Christ Court for hosting. Thank you to Stigma and Sola Ecclesia, proud parasite for coming on and being second and third chair. You can fight over who got which chair. God bless you all. Take care and have a good day. <laughs>